Welcome back to Tinker's Toy and Hobby. My name is Kalatea, and today we're going to be talking about how to pick prizes for your claw machines. We've been running Tinker's for about two years, and one of the most exciting and painstaking parts of running a successful route is finding prizes that keep your players coming back for more. So in today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about how to pick prizes for your route and how to take into consideration your demographic, the location, and um, what sorts of things your audience will be interested in. So there's also an article over on Toy Box HQ's website about this exact topic if you're looking to dive into it a little bit further. I'll link that down in the pinned comment. So the very first thing that you need to do when you are looking for prizes is understand your audience. A trampoline park with a demographic of primarily young children is probably going to um, be more interested in things like Nintendo Switches and fidget poppers and things that are kind of more pertinent to this younger generation, whereas the clientele at a sports bar is going to be interested in things that are either nostalgic to their childhood or apply to them in their current situation today. So things like adult-themed show plushies or um, NESs and things that they grew up with. So where you're located and the type of audience that they have coming in is going to make a huge impact on the types of prizes you pick for your machines. Another thing to consider is whether the location of your machine is going to see a lot of tourist stress tourist attraction. If you have customers revisiting this location pretty frequently, you're probably going to want to refresh your prize stock every now and then, but if most of your attraction is coming from tourists and you find that you have a certain genre of items that seems to work well in that area with that fresh traffic coming in, you're probably not going to have to switch out your prizes as often. Another super important thing to take into consideration is how much variety you're offering. If somebody goes up to a claw machine and they see maybe two different things in there but neither of them apply to them, they're probably not going to play. But if you offer a large variety of different prizes like plush and PVC keychains like you can find over on Alibaba or on Toy Box HQ, you're going to be more likely to appeal to a wider demographic. So try to include a lot of different types of shows, a lot of different types of interests in your prize mix. Next up, you want to focus on the quality of your prizes. Now, if somebody wins something from your machine but it falls apart two seconds later they're probably not going to be playing again in the future make sure you invest in prizes that have very good durability um maybe do a couple sample items of prizes that you're interested in make sure they're the quality you want to be putting out there for your business most of your players are going to be coming from the regular clientele that come into the establishments you're based in so you want to make sure that you're making a really good first impression on them when they very first try your machine if they get something that's broken or that is going to break very easily out of your machine they're probably not going to return to that machine in the future. Um, it's going to fade into the background of their visit. But if you make a very good first impression, either with the variety of your prizes, the type of prizes you offer, or the durability of your prizes for such a low cost, you may see more plays in the future. That's going to become a regular part of their visit. The next thing you want to do is consider the size of the prizes you're offering. If you're offering prizes that are too heavy for the claw to pick up or are too big for the claw to even get around, those players are going to think something's rigged. So that being said, make sure that the size of the prizes you offer are appropriate for the machine that you are placing for the claw that you have on that machine. You don't want to be putting things in that are too heavy or too large to actually win. Um, winners create players. I was was a quick play that said that? Well, the general consensus in the community is that winners create players, and if you're not providing products that can actually be won, you're going to have a really hard time generating a player base. Another thing to take into consideration is the trends that have shown up over time. So right now, fidget poppers are super, super popular in claw machines, and also just a tried and true brand that has continued to be popular over the years is Pokemon. So find a way to combine the two to create a sought-after prize that people are going to actually want to play for. Um, and pay attention, those trends won't always be the same. Um, there's going to be new things that come out and are interesting to people. Another recent one is those vomiting eggs, so we made sure to throw those in our mix. Um, and as much as <laughs> TikTok is a, a questionable app in general, um, they do have a lot of um, trending items that happen to be just small enough to put in claw machines. So pay attention to the ads that are going around there. They can be great to find locker box prizes or um, just prizes in general that can go in your machine, and Eva does a good job of stocking those prizes. Alongside trending items is any seasonal holidays that are going to be coming up. Christmas just passed in one of our locations. Actually, the manager came to us and told us that she had played our machine specifically to get stocking stuffers for her kids. And there was a lot of customers that were coming in and doing that same exact thing because we're in a small town. There's not really a lot of accessibility to items like that. Um, so definitely take that into consideration. With Valentine's Day right around the corner, why don't you pull out that heart-themed stock? There's going to be a lot of people that are interested in that, maybe as a gift for somebody else or just because they feel like it's a limited time thing. 
So before we get into the rest of the things that you should be considering when you're shopping for prizes for your miniature claw machine, go ahead and subscribe if you're enjoying this video and go check out the blog post that is associated with this video. We dive into it a little bit deeper, some of the things that you should consider when you are shopping for prizes. Um, that's over on Toybox HQ. And again, I will be linking that blog post down in the description below for you guys to read into. Next, you're going to want to consider the cost of the prizes that you're providing. We have a pretty high prize budget of roughly a dollar. Um, not all of our prizes go up to this, but this allows us to put some more high value prizes in the mix. Sometimes our prizes cost more than a dollar, but because we have some of those lower prize costs on the other end, it all kind of averages out to about a dollar. With a one in five play ratio, that puts you into about a four dollar profit margin for each item that is won. And you're going to want to kind of strike a balance between cost and value for the prizes in your machine. You may have a higher play ratio um, and so in that case you may want to put more expensive prizes in there so that people continue to play even though it's not as common that they'll win. Claw machines overall have a pretty decent profit margin no matter how much you're spending on your prizes um, so there is a lot of wiggle room in that department. You also want to take into consideration shipping costs and things like that and how those affect the cost of your prizes. I think we've done the math and for Ocean Freight um, from Eva we see roughly a 15 cent increase on each item that we order from that shipping cost. After you have your prizes, you're gonna to want to rotate and refresh them regularly. Now, this helps add the limit, limited time feel to your claw machine. If somebody sees something that they want and they know that you switch things out every two weeks or so, because again, your clients are mostly going to be the employees of the establishments that you are in, or the regular clients coming into those establishments, um, they're gonna be more likely to play when they know that you're probably gonna be removing those items soon and they're gonna lose their chance to win that. So um, encourage that limited time feel encourage people to get caught up in that I need to get it now and you will see more plays the last thing you're going to want to pay attention to when you're shopping for prizes is the feedback that you get from your customers. Now, a really important thing to consider here is getting a good working relationship started with the employees of the establishments you service is going to be really valuable to you here. They're going to know what their coworkers are playing for. They're going to know what the customers are playing for. They're going to kind of have an inside scoop as to what the most desirable items in your mix are. And that can be a really great um, reason to offer the employees some kind of incentive. Now, this isn't traditional in a commission sense, but we offer a lot of our locations a 20% commission to the employee tip jar just to form a good working relationship with those employees. And they've gotten used to us coming in and servicing our machines and giving them a little something something out of the machine when we go to service it. Not only does that encourage them to let us know what people are playing for, but it also encourages them to keep an eye out for that machine because they know they get something out of it. This can be really, really valuable feedback for you as a vendor because you get to know what you should be purchasing next. If shopping for the next right prize is stressing you out, remember that as vendors, we're in a very unique position that not a lot of adults find themselves in, and it's a really fun position to be in. We get to spend our days shopping for toys and distributing them and kind of just bringing some fun to the establishments in our communities. So obviously not a lot of adults find themselves in that situation. It's a really fun situation to be in, but it can come with its own stresses. Try to remember what you wanted to play for as a kid in claw machines. I know I would have gone for anything electronic, and there's lots of... Um, low-cost electronics to put in machines out there now. Um, those prize locker boxes, those never existed when I was a kid, so it's really great to see that that has become another way to encourage plays. Really take into consideration what you're putting in those prize boxes. I know a lot of people put plush, but there are much higher value items you can put in for the same cost um, if you're willing to do a little bit of shopping around. All right, so hopefully that helps some of you guys out there. Um, shopping for prizes can be really fun, but it can also be kind of stressful when you need to make a profit in order to keep your business running. Hi, Ryobi. So if you guys want to see more vending content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and definitely go check out Toy Box HQ. If you guys want to try out the products that Alibaba offers, but you're worried about the shipping risks or the cost, he offers some pretty fair priced items. It can be a great way to dip your toes in the water and kind of see if that's something you're even interested in. It's a great opportunity to test the quality of these products and see for yourself whether or not they're worth running in your machines. Again, we want high quality toys going out there because they bring more players in and he really does offer a great selection. And so definitely check that out. Um, and hopefully these tips helped you out. Stay tuned for more Let's Talk Vending and check out the Tinker's Tips blog over on Toybox HQ. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. I like this so light. There. I know, so do Very I. Doesn't cool. it look so much better? Well, I like that it surrounds the camera because then everything's kind of evenly distributed. No shadows. Isn't that so nice? It's really nice. It feels very professional, which has given me imposter syndrome. I know. And I don't even make videos. Bye.